Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by K. Scott. I am a furniture artist who makes my living taking found and thrifted pieces of furniture that are worn out or just plain outdated and bringing them right back to life. Make sure that you hang out all the way until the end of the video because I'm gonna be announcing a really cool giveaway. So I've been on a pretty hardcore mid-century modern and bohemian style kick lately, but in today's video, I'm gonna be taking things back to the style of furniture that originally got me so enthralled in this furniture painting business, and I'm gonna be doing a farmhouse style piece. I picked up this Bombay style media console from a furniture auction about three years ago, and it was actually one of the first furniture pieces that I ever sprayed with chalk paint. I wasn't 100% confident in the top coat on this piece, so we ended up just keeping it in our kitchen and using it as a coffee bar and extra storage. We're currently renovating our kitchen and this piece just doesn't have a home in there anymore, so I decided to take it out to the garage, clean it up, and give it a little bit of a new life before I pass it on to its new family. Because of the lines of this piece and the overall sort of rustic feel that it has, I decided that a farmhouse finish would suit it best. Since I wasn't planning on making a full YouTube video of this piece, I went ahead and sanded off the top off camera. I started with an 80 grit sandpaper to remove my previous top coat paint and primer down to the bare wood. Then I moved up to a 120 grit and finally a 240 grit to make things nice and smooth. Like I said, this is one of the first pieces that I ever sprayed and I definitely made a mess on the side of the drawer. So for this makeover, I'm actually gonna pull the drawer right out of the piece and I gave it the same sand job that I did on the top, right down to the bare wood. Once I had all of the sanding out of the way, I went ahead and gave the whole piece a really thorough cleaning with some TSP alternative. Then I went back with some clean, clear water and rinsed off any residue. There are two handles on the drawer of this piece, but they're a little tricky. Originally, I decided to just paint right over them because they don't actually go through to the back of the drawer and I cannot figure out a way to remove these without completely chewing up the drawer fronts. I decided this time I'm just going to paint over them again and then I will try and do a separate finish on them at the end. We'll see how that goes. I wanna leave the top of this piece in a natural wood finish, but there's a solid wood band around the top and then a veneered section in the middle, and they're a little bit different than each other. So to unify that, I'm gonna do a paint wash with a little bit of leftover chalk paint and some water. I brushed my watered down chalk paint over the whole surface of the top and then came back with a shop rag just to wipe off any excess. This paint wash is going to even out and unify the different woods and leave me with a really nice whitewashed or weathered effect.
Now that I have the top where I want it, I'm gonna mask it off so that I can paint the body of the piece without getting any overspray on it. I'm gonna be painting the body of this console in Annie Sloan chalk paint in the color Old White. Annie Sloan is a really thick chalk paint, so I need to water it down quite a bit to get it to spray through my gun nicely. I mixed up about two parts of chalk paint to one part of water and got a consistency that I think will run through my spray gun quite nicely. Using my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun, I quickly applied two coats of chalk paint to the entire bottom section of this piece. I let my paint dry for about two hours and then I came back out to apply some faux distressing. I'm using some Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Mud Puddle and a zebra square brush to really lightly rub this brown paint on any edges that would naturally receive wear. Normally you'll see distressing done with sandpaper just sanding through these areas down to the original finish but because this was already painted if I sanded it all I would see was the gray paint from underneath. So this light little application of paint on those areas is going to mimic a traditional distress. To seal up all of my hard work and give it some awesome protection, I applied three coats of Varathene Diamond Wood Finish in a satin sheen over everything. Applying a water-based poly like this to a bare wood surface tends to raise the wood grain and give a rough feel. So after my first coat, I came back with a 400 grit sandpaper and just smoothed everything out before applying my second and third coat. The painted bottom was nice and smooth, so I didn't feel any need to sand between coats. And now it was time to deal with this hardware. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I could not figure out a way to remove these poles without damaging the front surface of the drawers. So I decided to tape them off with some painter's tape. Once I had the poles nicely taped off, I recycled a piece of the masking paper from the top to protect the rest of the drawer front. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. Now that everything else is nice and protected, I'm gonna spray my hardware with this Rust-Oleum metallic finish in a coppery brown color. So that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. Oh, I will open up. 
While my hardware was drying out in the garage, I moved the piece inside and it was just looking a little flat. This piece has a lot of great character, nicks, dings, and dents in the wood, and I really wanted to highlight those. So I broke out some Dixie Belle Best Staying Wax in brown. Using a small wax brush, I applied my dark wax over any of those character marks that I really wanted to highlight. Because a dark wax like this is so highly pigmented and the chalk paint is porous, you really want to make sure that your paint is sealed either with a clear wax or a poly type top coat like I used here so that you can manipulate it and move it around on top of the paint instead of it just absorbing all into the paint and getting stuck. This Dixie Belle wax is actually a water-based product so I used a little baby wipe here to sort of wipe back any excess and move the product around to make sure that it was just in the areas that I wanted it. I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. This is not a finish that I do very often, but I think it really suits this piece and I had a lot of fun sitting down and being a little more artistic than I usually am. And while this is not a really huge dramatic before and after from where I started to where I ended up, I do really love the way that this piece turned out and I think its new family will enjoy it as well. Ocean, but it's unsaid. Words spoken and I'll let my mind be carried by the waves. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. All right, it is giveaway time. To say thank you to all of you who have watched a video, taken the time to click that subscribe button, and really just supported me on this new YouTube journey of mine over the past few months, I dug through my painting stash and pulled together a really awesome giveaway package of five of my favorite zebra paintbrushes and a Salvage by K. Scott apron. To be entered, you need to be subscribed to my channel, leave me a thumbs up on this video, and a comment down below. Good luck! Thank you so much for joining me again today. I will see you guys next week with another mid-century modern furniture flip.